Good morning, everyone. This is Heavy Lead Enthusiast. I'm coming in today because I'm very excited about this caliber. I'm going to be reloading 350 Legend. And what I'm going to be using is some 9mm full metal jacket, 147 grain bullets. I got these from Everglades Ammo. If I remember right, I got a thousand of them for about, I believe, $140. A little cheaper than buying the specified bullets for 350 Legend. I do plan on getting into cast in this caliber using the uh, RCBS 358 200 grain uh, round flat, I believe it's called. I know Lee makes their copy too. But anyways, I'm, for components, I'm going to be using Starline Brass. And I did uh, measure these. These are all below the maximum length for the brass itself and then for my powder today i'm going to be using imr 4227 i wanted to try this powder first because i know it doesn't spike in pressures compared to h110 or 296 i think it's gonna be a lot more temperature stable because i've read some things online don't know if it's true but uh, H110, for example, can struggle when the temperatures get below zero. So anyways, IMR4227 IMR is a tube, uh, single base tubular powder. I'll try and show you this the best I can. If you look closely, they look like little square tubes. They're not rounded like a ball powder. And I'm going to be using RCBS dies, and I'm learning new stuff every day, guys. Uh, this came with two expander plugs for my uh, ex uh, case mouth expansion. They both say 38357. This will focus, yeah, nine millimeter, 38. One is a stepped expander and one is a tapered expander. Now, guys, com put a comment if I'm getting this wrong, but I believe the stepped expander is better for getting the bullets lined up straight in the case. They're kind of like a Lyman M die. And then the tapered expander is kind of like the Lee die kits for pistol they just open the case mouth only they don't uh, also uniform the case as you go down into it so basically for rookies or people that know don't know anything about reloading lead eyes simply just open this case mouth that's it with like a lyman m die or this uh, stepped expander it kind of uniformly opens up as it goes down instead of just this top right here so it makes, uh, for example, lead bullets. Lead bullets, in my experience, have seeded better with something like a Lyman M die. And my charges, I'm going to be using uh, pretty light charges just because this is my first time getting into the caliber. I plan on using uh, 24 and 24.5 grains. Now the data I've found, and by the way, thank you, Dummy Round. I watched one of your videos on... Uh, the new Lyman, I think it's the 51st reloading book. Uh, I might have screenshotted some data for the 350 Legend. Uh, I looked at that, and there's also some online data too. I'm seeing the max for 147 grain, like a Winchester FMJ. A little different profile than this, but same bullet weight. It's going from like 24 to 28 grains of uh, 4227. And there's some other data. It's pretty close in comparison, 25 to 28. Also, I invested in a case gauge for the 350 Legend because I've heard a lot of people have issues with uh, cases not wanting to chamber. So I figured I would, that was a good investment. And then also for my scooper, I use these, uh, let me grab this out of here.
They're called lead dippers. I'm using the 1.9 cc scooper and the reason I'm using that particular size is because when you buy the lead dipper set, it comes with like a, it's a square box that has all different sizes from like 0.33 to beyond. But you get this little table with uh, some common powders. So I got IMR4227. This is like a little slider thing. You can slide it uh, back and forth and it has the different CC scoopers to use. So we're using IMR4227. And since we're using around 24 grains, I'm gonna use the 1.9 CC dipper. And then also I plan on testing my reloads against this factory ammo for accuracy. Pretty excited about that. I'm hoping 4227 really likes the 350 Legend. I wanted to save my H110 for 44 mag and 357 mag. So, all right, guys, I probably won't show all the reloading steps, but I plan on filming uh, results and how accurate they are on target and maybe some other things uh, if I catch them and might seem interesting. All right, guys, I'm at the reloading bench. I just wanted to also add some things I've noticed with these dies before I get into that. Uh, I don't know why I keep forgetting about primers, but I for primers for the 350 Legend, I'm using CCI Magnum small rifle primers, the number 450. But anyways, for these dies, I'm expanding the case mouth right now to accept these... Uh, full metal jacket bullets. But anyways, when I'm doing that, what I, get, I want to talk to you guys about is the instructions for the RCBS die set for this didn't work for me. And I'll tell you what I did. So if you read the instructions, I got them right here. I'll go through them with you guys. And for the stepped expanders, it basically wants you to thread the expander die body down into the press till it's just above the shell holder. When you're using the stepped expander, that simply doesn't work because what happens is your case doesn't even go up all the way in. So basically what happens is, if I can illustrate this, I... Could have probably filmed it when it was happening, but I had to figure it out, figure out what was going on. So what would happen is they'd have me put this shell holder till basically this die was just sitting right above it. That didn't work with the expander plug, even screwed out almost all the way on the very edge because I'd just barely get the case in right here. So what I did was I put this plug out as far as I could. I screw this die all the way out as far as I could. I raised the ram, so I raised this all the way up, and then I screwed this till about as far as it's, it could go. Then I lowered this ram, then I did a left turn on this die, so that way I could raise this all the way up and there'd be no resistance. And then what I did was I set that Lockering. I'm using Hornady lock rings, by the way, guys. The reason I like these the best because the RCBS ones, the screw likes to dig into the threads, and I don't like that with the Hornady one. And maybe I can show you guys this. If you see this screw right here, it just tightens into the body of this lock ring. It doesn't tie into. It doesn't tighten into the threads here. You don't want to damage these. So. Anyways, um, back to what I was talking about. I basically tightened this up, and then I got this set. Then all I had to do was uh, basically configure this. So now I have it where it's just hitting the part of the stepped expander plug. Part of the plug, excuse me. And then if I put a bullet in there, it snaps in good, and it seats pretty straight. That's kind of not a good way to do it. 
with one hand, but I'd have to put my phone down to, to get it straight, but it's going in there. there it's kind of tricky when it comes to getting the right uh, case expansion with these. It does help if you trim your cases, to be honest, but these these cases are all pretty close. They're within 5,000, so uh, not too worried about it. But that's why I wanted to add about these dies that I've noticed is uh, the instructions that they claim you need to have the body so close to the shell holder. And I didn't put it to where it was touching. I simply had it where it was just a little bit above it. It just doesn't work for 350 Legend. All right, guys, I just got done uh, loading up the rest of the rounds. And here's what they look like. That uh, nine millimeter bullet. I found a overall length of 2.10. And for my process to streamline it, since uh, these cartridges don't use a roll crimp, they use a taper crimp, so I have no problem uh, with these dies. You can seat the bullet and crimp at the same time, because, or that's how I have it set up, I should say. So all I would do is I would get a case. I'd put it here. Then I'd grab my funnel, put it on top, and then... I would weigh out a charge, so I'm doing, I also decided I'm only going to do 24 grains instead of 24.5 as well, just because I have no experience with this load. It's a one of the lightest charges I could find, and also the powder is seated pretty high up there. I don't know if you can hear, probably can't hear that, but bullet probably goes down to about here, and then the powder is about right here, so anyways, what I would do is... Uh, weigh my charge right here on my scale. Then once I got 24 grains, I put it in here. Then simply all I would do is I'd put this in here, put the bullet on top, run it up. It would seat and crimp the bullet. Then after that, I would check it in my gauge. So all I would do is make sure that this goes in flush like that. And then I would just put it over here. I'd film the process, but there's no way I could do it uh, one-handed. Yep, and usually for cartridges that I roll crimp, I don't do the seat and crimp at the same time. So if I was doing 357 with this setup, all I would do is weigh my powder charge while having the cartridge over here ready with the funnel on it. I put the powder in after I got the correct charge. I put the bullet on top. I just seat it and then I put it over on the side for uh, me to adjust the crimp die later. So that's about it. I might put some range footage in this. Okay guys, I'm back. I just wanted to post my range results and uh, for the 350 Legend and I also wanted to kind of show you the 10 millimeter results as well. Not uh, the groups for 10 millimeter we're all pretty similar throughout the whole test, but I'll kind of show you some pressure signs here. After bit, I wanted to get it into 350 Legend first because that's what this video is about. That's the main topic here. Anyways, I just wanted to show you to start off how different this brass is. So here's my hand load, and then here's uh, some factory ammo. Look at the difference in the brass, just how dirty it is. I did pick up a Winchester uh, factory load and shook it just to kind of guess and see what powder they have in it um i'm thinking it is compressed if not the powder is at least touching the base of the bullet so i don't know if they used a slower burning powder or what they did or they used a mix of powders but uh shot it was very dirty and the accuracy that i got was not very good out of my rifle I was using a Ruger American Ranch in 350 Legend. It's got a 16 inch barrel. And then here's the brass for my reload. It's, uh, I got the stats here. Overall length of 2.1, 24 grains of IMR 4227. I'm using a CCI 450 small rifle Magnum primer that I'm just using a cheap 147 grain Full metal jacket, nine millimeter bullet, using Starline brass. 
and that's kind of what it looks like. So for the results, all righty. So here's my hand load and here's the factory. Uh, for this group, I did pull a shot, but let's pretend even if I didn't pull a shot, the group from center to far farthest center was three and a half inches at a hundred yards. This is a hundred yard target. Uh, without the pulled shot, it's one and a half inches. And this is the only load I tried, just 24 grains. I mean, I haven't even started load development. I could get these groups much tighter, so I'm very excited. Uh, you can get this kind of accuracy out of a nine millimeter full metal jacket bullet, so pretty cool. Uh, very disappointed in this grouping by the factory Winchester 180 grain uh, soft point. I measured it with a tape measure from center to center, or maybe it was right here. Uh, Five and a half inches, not good at all. Very disappointed in that, so figured I'd show you guys that stat. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on these primers. So here's the factory primers. And they look uh, pretty reasonably uh, normal in terms of pressure. No huge flattening or cratering. And then here's the primers for my reloads. These look fairly soft too, so I'm not an over or high pressure uh, load for sure. And also the reason only had two five shot groups, I wanted to kind of share this story with you guys in case you've ever run into this issue. So the range I go to is very heavily influenced with shotgun shooters. So at this range, every Tuesday and Thursday, they're supposed to have skeet shooting for people on the trap team in high school, I'm guessing. And anyways, yesterday was Wednesday. So I went, I'm like, oh, I won't have to run into any of those people trying to kick me off the rifle range just so they can shoot clays. Well, there was a team there on Wednesday when it's not their designated night trying to kick me off the range. So I had to pretty much bully myself into it and say, hey, I'm setting my target down there. You guys can deal with it and then I'm gonna shoot it. But they shot so much and so often, I couldn't just keep, you know, tell them to stop, run down, check the target, run back. Luckily, my scope was strong enough I could see my groups in the scope. And I didn't even have time to sight my gun in. That's why the groups are so far off target too, but they're on paper and I could see them, so that's what matters. But uh, if you guys ever have any experience like that, let me know, just, very frustrating as a reloader and a guy who works and doesn't have much time to get to the range and actually test stuff. So, yep, that's why I only did two five-shot groups, just because I couldn't really keep going back and forth, back and forth. Basically had to bully myself in just to even put my target down there. They are trying to kick me out, which last time I checked, it's not their range. Anyways... Uh, to switch to 10 millimeter, I found my load. So my load, I'm going to use 8.5 and here's why. I tried 8.8 .8 last night and if you can see right there, look at those primers. They're really starting to crater. Starting to flatten too. When you see primers starting to crater like that, that means you're really starting to push the pressure. It's not as bad as like uh, piercing primers, but you're getting up there. With these, these still look fairly normal. You can definitely tell there, there's some pressure. I even uh, contemplated going down to 8.3 grains. It's all relative though, and the Lyman book I'd say is a little more uh, reliable than the Hornady one. I seated these at uh, I believe 1.255, the max was 1.260, but I just wanted to have a little, I wanted to see them just a pinch deeper, 
That way I wouldn't have to worry about uh, the cartridge being too long and then it's not gonna chamber, stuff like that. But uh, 8.5 is pretty close because of uh, I do have some data from the Lyman uh, 50th handbook written down. So for a 10 millimeter with 180 grain bullet, they got 6.8 to 8.4. And 8.5 was pretty much the last charge before I started seeing some pretty obvious uh, pressure signs. So I think I'm going to stick with that, that 8.5, maybe 8.3. Also, I want to show you the cases. So even with uh, the pressures, I don't know if this is due to high point sloppy chamber or what. You still have some soot on the side, but it has improved a lot compared to my earlier loads when I started off at seven. I mean, that whole case was just black, just covered in soot. That means the case is not obturating because it's such a low pressure cartridge, so. But yeah, uh, did the 350 Legend, to switch back to 350 now, did the 350 Legend do good? I'd say so, and I really impressed myself with my starting charge of uh, IMR 4227. So I'm going to keep working on it and tweaking it. I think I'm going to work up to 24.5 and try that next. But uh, that's what I got for you guys today. If you like this video, feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And have a good day. And God bless.